Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Black Quarterback Series. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have a lot of new people here. So I might my intro might be a little long this week. Let's get into it. Brown came out with it. Down to the one yard line. Series, if you don't know me, my name is Keys. Uh, this is Black Quarterback Series where we talk about all black quarterbacks all the time. Um, and yeah, let's get in. Let's get into this week. So, um, I think I'm gonna do the long-winded ones first this week, and then I'm gonna go a fire round because it's a lot of fire round stuff we need to talk about. So, let's get into Lamar. First, let's talk about his numbers. He was 27 for 41, 266 yards, three touchdowns. Two interceptions, 21 carries, 120 yards. So, he did everything. And most of that was in the second half. Um, Minnesota came out, put their foot on uh, Baltimore's throat. Baltimore played terrible in the first half. They only had 10 points in the second half. But they proceeded to outscore um, Minnesota 17-7 in the, in the second half. So, um, what happened? Uh, my friend tells me, and I saw the game, Minnesota tends to scale back on the offense and stop being as aggressive in the second half and allow teams to come back into the game. And um, I, I, I didn't really see that. I just thought Baltimore wasn't doing what they do, and Minnesota was taking advantage of it. And uh, when Minnesota stopped taking advantage of it, that's when Baltimore was able to do what Baltimore does. And they, Baltimore ended up getting a random running game going. They ended up getting some critical defensive stops after going down 24-7. Um, defense finally woke up. Uh, Lamar started to play very well. He had 41 passes. Um, they ended up playing Baltimore. They ended up playing Baltimore football, right? Um, do what they do best, run the ball, set, set up the run, set up the pass, and uh, go from there. So I think it was a great game. Um, it, it, but it doesn't happen without that pass interference call that leads that leads to a touchdown on the at the end of the first half. That was a huge call, huge play, huge moment, and they took advantage of it. And also another huge moment that was is when Lamar went for it on fourth down. I can't remember what quarter it was. I think it was the fourth, the fourth or the end of the third. And they went for it, and Lamar pushed the people off the side. And he said, no, 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 we, I got it, I got it. Every time Lamar do that, I'd be like, oh, okay. So he ended up, normally most times than not, he ends up scoring a touchdown. So he ends up scoring a touchdown. Um, the only problem I do have with them this this week is they wasn't able to, they wasn't able to stop uh, Minnesota in critical situations. And I don't want that to come back to bite the Ravens' defense in the playoffs. Because in the playoffs, we lose that game. We got to, as Baltimore, they have to get out to better starts. They have to get out to better starts, and they have to close better. Now, they, this is kind of contradictory. They're great closers, but we, don't, we need to stop winning on field goals and, and Lamar Magic. We need to just put these teams away when we can put them away. There was many times in this game, in the second half, where we could have put them away, but we let them stay in the game. Um, so I think that's something they need to work on. But overall, it was a really good week. Lamar pulled them out, pulled them out of doldrums as usual. And uh, I'm not understanding as to why Lamar is not front runner for the MVP. Because when you look at the MVP, Aaron Rodgers went out. We'll talk about him later. Aaron Rodgers was gone. Kyler Murray is hurt. Uh, Tom Brady has an all-star team. And um, it's one other guy in front of us. It's one other guy in front of us. I just watched the Monday night. Uh, graphic about it, but when you look at all these guys, these guys are not working with. They're working with way more. They either working with more or they're hurt. I think Lamar should be front runner for MVP. I did have Kyler Murray, but Kyler Murray looks like he's gonna be hurt. Uh, he's gonna be hurt and out for at least another week. So um, I think that's gonna be a thing, and I think Lamar should be front runner for MVP until he has a bad showing or they lose in bad fashion. So um, that's what I think. So, 
Speaking of Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins was out tonight today. Um, uh, I think Hopkins had a hamstring. Kyler Murray had the uh, had the ankle. Um, no news for it yet, but if we find more news, best believe I'll let you know. Kansas City. Now, they won. They won. Patrick Mahomes was twenty for thirty-seven, one hundred sixty-six yards, a touch and a touchdown. Um. Special teams was really the only thing that kept um, Green Bay from losing this game. Um, Jordan Love also is a guy we cover. Uh, he's of that. He's of that Colin Kaepernick mold. I think he's mixed. Um, Jordan Love looked like a rookie. He looked like a rookie. He looked nervous. He looked like it was his first game, and he just looks like he's just not ready. He does not look ready to play professional football. He. He didn't look very good. Green Bay just didn't. You know, you know what Chicago's doing with um, our guy Justin. They're still putting him in situations to be successful. Green Bay didn't even put him in situations to be successful. They just said run the ball and don't mess it up. And they didn't even. It, it didn't. It looked like he had never taken a snap ever. That's how bad Jordan Love looked. Um, I don't have his numbers right here in front of me. But his numbers were not very good. I can tell you that. Uh, missed a lot of receivers, running out, uh, giving sacks. Um, it's just it didn't look good for him. It, it didn't look good for him. The Kansas City side of this, the Kansas City side of this, Kansas City side of this, they should have won this game thirty to like seven. There's no reason this game should have been as close as it was. They offense didn't give you nothing, and their special teams gave y'all opportunities. So. I think that this game should have been over fairly quickly. It should have been over fairly quickly like the Dallas game. And transitioning to the Dallas game, um, Dak Prescott was 19 for 39, 202 yards, uh, 232 yards, two touchdowns and interception. I'll be honest with you guys, um, I stopped watching this game around 30 to 6. Um, I think I think KC started to play, and I was looking at other games. I think Lamar was playing at the same time, so I stopped watching this game when it was like thirty to six, right? And at that point, Dallas had no points. I think it was thirty to zero. Dallas had no points, so I'm assuming all these numbers are garbage numbers. But when it was time, Dak looked awful. Dak looked awful. It it, it just uh, didn't look good for him. I don't know if he's still hurt or what's going on, but. Dak didn't look good, and I gave Dak praises all year, so not a real good game for him. Hopefully, they snap back because this is it wasn't like a big loss, but this is a okay, get your stuff together loss because there's no reason you should lose this bad to a Denver team. Now, I love Teddy, we're gonna cover Teddy in a minute, but you shouldn't lose to a Teddy Bridgewater led team that just traded Von Miller. You shouldn't lose to that team, and the way you lost was really, really bad. Uh, this is a poor loss for Dallas. It puts things in perspective that they're still the Cowboys and they can still lose on any given Sunday. Uh, but I expect for them to bounce back. I don't. I don't see this as something that really will kill their season. I see it as a blemish. Um, they'll be okay. I think they'll be okay. Um, defense. Everybody realized that they can get beat, and I think this was Dallas's they can get beat game. So that's what I think of that. But transitioning to Teddy Bridgewater. Here's his numbers, and I think that he played well. He's, he put balls in places that I didn't think Teddy Bridgewater could put him. <clears throat> Excuse me. He put balls in places that I didn't think Teddy Bridgewater could put could put the ball in. Um, Teddy Bridgewater just has these flashes of greatness that I'm like, man, if you could just stay consistent like this. Like, you see games like this for Teddy, and you're like, okay, we can bid on that. And then you see games... Um, when he was in Carolina, where the whole second half, you're like, Teddy, what are you doing? So, um, but I will give I will give Denver credit. That defense carried the game because that defense played so well against that high powered uh, Dallas offense. So I will give it that. So good game for Teddy. Poor game from Dak. I think um, Dak can get it back together, and if. Teddy could just live up to that team. If Teddy could just stay right here, he will win enough games to where I think that he'll be the starting quarterback. Because if they lose too many games, 
uh, they're going to draft the quarterback and uh, move on from Teddy. So, hope he wins enough games to where they can't draft the quarterback. And so, next we have the Eagles versus the Chargers. Um, <clears throat> Justin Fields, or Justin Fields, he's playing tonight. He's, pl- he's playing tonight. I'm recording this right before the game. Um, Jalen Hurts was 11 for 17, 162 yards, a touchdown, 10 carries, and 62 yards. The Eagles need to realize that they're a running team right now. They don't. You don't need to pass it unless you have to. You have to take Jalen Hurts as year one Lamar. That's that's the mold Jalen Hurts is in right now. Year one Lamar was just a flat out runner. Um, if the first thing wasn't there, he was gone. If it's uh, he couldn't re- he couldn't really throw down field. He was darting it. He was darting it, but um, he just wasn't. A, he wasn't a passer that he is now. Um, I think Lamar was a better passer than Jalen Hurts was year one, but I think the Eagles need to look at that method and the way the Baltimore developed Lamar and use that same mode to develop Jalen. Because they're pretty much almost the same type of player. Jalen is just not as shifty as Lamar is. And I think Lamar is a better passer than Jalen is. So, um, His body frame is more of a stout runner. You know what I mean? Jalen Hurts is very a stout dude. So, but he he just has to know how to pass better. Um, I think he can get better with his accuracy, but I'm not sure. I've seen we've seen quarterbacks. Josh Allen got better with his accuracy. Lamar got better with his accuracy. So it is possible, but I don't know if his if his ceiling is as high as we want it to be. I don't know if his ceiling is high as high as we want it to be. Um. They played well, but this is lost to a more talented team. Um, they shouldn't have been in the game to begin with. They shouldn't have been. They shouldn't have been in the game to begin with. Uh, the defense played well against a very, very good Chargers offense. Now the Chargers have been sputtering lately. Um, the Chargers are not as good. I don't think they're as good as we thought they were. So, but uh, whether than whether you think the Chargers are great or think Justin Herbert is great, that's a really good football team. That the Eagles win the game with, um, so good game. It was a good game. Um, it wasn't as, <laughs> it wasn't as. Um, I hate to call anything boring because I love our guys, but that game it was exciting. It was exciting, but it was on the, the end of the, of the day. So it wasn't as exciting as it should have been. But for me anyway, this is just my personal opinion. I still watch the game, like y'all telling you, I still broke it down. Um, it was good. It was good. Uh, the Eagles finally realized that they're a running team. So that was good. Um, defense came up with some huge stops. Big runs, as expected, from a running team, which is what the Eagles are. Um, and just overall, they just played well. But Justin Herbert and the Chargers are much more talented. They're just much more talented than the Eagles are. So... A good game by the Eagles, big, good stepping stone for them because you know we'll, all this season is about building towards next year and developing habits, and uh, especially with the new head coach and the quarterback. You know, this whole year is. A, I don't gauge the Eagles off wins and losses. I gauge the Eagles on how they look from week to week, and they look better this week than they did last week, and look better than the week before. So, um, the Eagles will be okay. They just need to get some more talent in there. Um, Devontae Smith, uh, Jalen, uh, and that coach. I think that'd be fine. That'd be fine. So there's never such thing as a good loss, but this wasn't like a poor loss, considering what you're at as a franchise. So um, I talked about how that game wasn't as good to look at, but uh, we have another game um, that uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys didn't even know what was, go- what was going on. So we had Houston. Uh, there, this game that you guys didn't even know was on because it wasn't like a mainstream game, but I cover everything. So Tyrod Taylor versus Jacoby Brissett. Uh, Tyrod Taylor had uh, just came back off injury. He came back this week. He didn't look very good. He looked very rusty, which is to be expected. He'd been out most of the season. He was 24 for 43, 240 yards, three interceptions. Um, Jacoby Brissett. We pretty much know who, what he is right now, what he brings to the table. Uh, he was 26-43, 244 yards, touchdown, two interceptions. Final score was 17-7, to seven, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, and nobody scored, like, after, like, the 
third quarter or something like that. So the game is pretty stagnant. Um, so there's the numbers. Um, uh, they did have a tight end that made some crazy catches. If I can find the catches, I'll put them in there. But he was the most exciting thing that happened that whole game. Um, so, yeah. And um, so, also, um, something I didn't talk about and I didn't even know because I didn't watch I didn't watch the game until the morning, um, Josh Johnson. Um, Josh Johnson was in the XFL, and I can't remember who he played for. I think he played for one of the Texas teams. Uh, he looked really good. He looked really good. Uh, he was 27 for 41, 317 yards and three touchdowns. Um, at this point, everybody looks good in uh, the Jets offense, but the guy who's supposed to look good in the Jets offense. Um, the protection was solid. Uh, he looked comfortable. Third string. Um, third string coming in out of nowhere. Cold turkey after their guy got hurt. Going against an indie team that's not bad defensively. Uh, he looked really, really good. But we'll get to, if he gets to start the, if he gets to start next week, I'll for sure cover it. But I didn't even know he had played until Friday. So um, we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens with that situation. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing if he play because I never thought Zach Wilson was much of anything. So so yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what what goes on with that. So, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. If you want to watch my uh, Monday night review, it uh, will be at the end card or it will be up here. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got, that's all I got for y'all. Um, if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, do all the youtube things, and uh, I'll see y'all Saturday.